Let's cross live to Gabon, the capital Libreville, where our correspondent has arrived as those borders open, Catherine Norris-Trent. Catherine, first of all, just talk us through what happens today. The general becomes officially, shall we say, president. Yes, that's right. The uh, military man behind the coup d'etat in Gabon, Brice Olige Ngema, is being sworn in as transition president at a ceremony here in Libreville today uh, that will be in front of the members of the Constitutional Court, which had been suspended by the military junta here uh, in Gabon, but then uh, temporarily uh, given back their functions to swear in the coup leader uh, as president of the transition. Now, we don't know how long that transition is going to be for. Perhaps we'll get more information on that today. Um, but he has taken over power. It seems it's being consolidated today at this ceremony in downtown uh, Gabon uh, in part of the presidential palace. So very much there uh, trying to consolidate that coup d'etat. Meanwhile, the ousted President Ali Bongo Odimba uh, remains under house arrest. We haven't heard from him from the, since that video that he put out on social networks calling for help and calling for his supporters to make some noise. It seems though he has been, um, well, taken away from power. Uh, the general says that he's been put into retirement and seems powerless really uh, to uh, stop the general from becoming transition president here in D Gabon today. It's interesting, Catherine, because just in terms of trying to report this, since the borders were closed, it was difficult. Even before that, for the elections, we had the, uh, the president who was banning the media from internationally from covering it. You've managed to cross in the last 24 hours. What is your initial sense of life under this new military junta? As soon as the borders were open and flights resumed, we, we flew into Gabon. And here, while well, life is continuing in the capital, if not somewhat calmer than usual. Locals tell us there are fewer cars and people on the streets, but it does seem uh, calm since we've been here. Uh, there is a curfew in place every night from 6 p.m. until 6 a.m. And you're right, over the, the recent elections, which were widely condemned as fraudulent, uh, President Bongo, as he then was, had cut off parts of the international media, including France 24, cut off the internet. That has been uh, restored, so people are able to contact the outside world and send messages we're able to broadcast again we're going to see just what the, the working conditions are like under uh, the coup leaders how far their promises to restore the institutions and restore democracy will be the coup leaders have been holding meetings with parts of african uh, gabonese civil society business leaders even parts of the opposition here so they're promising they want to get gabon back on track after 55 years of rule from the Bongo family, either Ali Bongo before him, his father, Omar Bongo. Uh, but clearly, these are very early days. We were talking to you days ago, Catherine, on the situation, the coup in Niger. It seems the response to this coup is notably different to the reaction to the Niger coup. Yes, it's really interesting the differences in, in responses to the coups uh, in Niger and here in Gabon. Now, in Gabon, we've had some condemnation from the international community over the military seizing power, but it's been much more muted than the response uh, to the putsch in Niger. So we've had France, for example, former colonial power here and former friend of the Bongo family uh, for many years, uh, said propping up that regime, ha has uh, condemned the coup, but also called for a restore uh, to civilian order, to recognise the results of the recent elections. And you've had Josep Borrell, the EU Foreign Affairs Commissioner, saying that, yes, he condemned the coup, but he also condemned the recent fraudulent elections. So a very mixed response. And a lot of people here seeing that as a response to the very corrupt uh, bongo years and, indeed, the corrupt elections. But there's also a sense in which this was, you know, something of an inside job. The man who's taken over power, General uh, Brice Oligi Ngema, was uh, the head of the Republican Guard, basically the presidential guard. He served under both Omar Bongo in the past and Ali Bongo. And he's very close to a lot of the Bongo clan, especially on his mother's side, with family links there. So parts of the opposition here in Gabon, including the main opposition figure, Alba Ondo Osa, saying that this has been a palace coup 
an inside job, which is retaining control of Gabon for parts of the, the clan which has been leading this country uh, for decades. So they're saying that they want the results of the recent elections to be recognised, which would give Alba Ondo Osa as winner, he says. But it doesn't look like that is the path that the military transition council is going to take. Uh, they seem like they want to, to wipe out the results of the recent elections and to carry on uh, on their path. So there is a tension here. Uh, people we've been speaking to in the streets, meanwhile, have been saying that they're, uh, all those we've spoken to, that they are relieved, they're pleased that the, uh, the Bongo regime itself under Ali Bongo has come to an end, but they're waiting to see what happens yet. And a lot of them saying they really want to see power return to civilian hands. Catherine, great to have that update. Catherine Norris-Trent in Libreville.